Great Northern Mall closed its doors to the public for the second time this year today. There was no power, but the remaining tenants are at their wits end. In December, we reported the mall had an issue with the lighting in the parking lot. Then from January to February, the mall closed its doors for nearly a month because of a burst water pipe. However, after reopening the doors, many problems still persist. Leaky roofs, potholes in the parking lots, and the town of Clay supervisor had said it's not fair to the tenants who were paying their rent. I think we're down to under 12 tenants left in, left in that building. They were doing the doggy paddle trying to survive, literally, with things like water coming in on them, with an, with an absentee landlord who, quite frankly, I don't think cares. Tonight, another tenant at the mall with new concerns now that the building closed for a second time this year. CBS 5 Samantha Croston is with the live eye in Clay right now. Well, the mall owner told me earlier today that the reason for the shutdown is because of issues with the sprinkler and electrical system. But today I also spoke with a mall tenant who says he is skeptical of that reasoning. It's hard to run a business in the Great Northern Mall when the mall itself keeps closing up shop. Today, I asked Noel White, a Great Northern tenant, what is the most disappointing part of another shutdown? Letting down my customers. You know, not being able, to, not being able there to provide, you know, obviously when the power's out, I can't fix their computers to be able to get them back to them so that they can be able to do the things they need to do with the work they do. White feels the owner doesn't care about his tenants and time after time keeps proving it through his actions. No homeowner buys a house and says, I'm just going to live here, thinking that they can just be like, man, eh, you know, I don't have to mow the lawn. I don't have to, you know, I don't have to tend, tend to, you know, repairing, you know, leaks. I don't have to fix the roof. I don't have to replace windows. Nobody thinks that way. Adding insult to injury, White thinks the likelier reason for the shutdown is that the great northern owner didn't foot the bill. National Grid did say the service being out was not related to an outage in the area or a technical issue. Unfortunately, Mike has a history of other malls of power being shut off at those facilities also, so this is just going in track record with his past precedents he has set forward. Over a dozen code violations later, White is also disappointed in town and county leaders' handling of the situation. As a homeowner, if I had an egregious code violation on my home, there's no way that they would let that ride for three and a half, four years, the three and a half years I've been here. And those code violations have been the same since I moved in. Now, the county has told us that the mall could go up for auction in October, or there is a chance they may just take it over themselves. The mall owner telling me that he is working on the problem right now, and he believes it should be resolved by tonight. The Crossland Live at Great Northern tonight, looking into the issues forcing the mall to close this time. Sam? Well, I spoke to the owner of the mall moments ago, and he says that the reason why the mall is shut down this time is not because he didn't pay the bill. Rather, it's because of issues with the electrical system and the sprinkler system. But this is the second time just this year that the mall has been closed down. Earlier today, we were able to speak with somebody from National Grid, and they told us that the shutdown, which happened this morning, is not related to a technical issue or an outage in the area. The owner has been cited for over a dozen code violations for the past year including but not limited to leaky roofs, potholes, and unkempt parking lots. He also is over $4 million behind on his property taxes. Tenants can hardly find the words to describe their frustration at this point. Noel White, the owner of CNY Max Store, says the mall owner is neglecting the responsibility he has as a landlord to provide services to his tenants. Because of that, some tenants in the mall, including White, have stopped paying the owner directly and instead are paying their rent through an escrow account. White says he is fed up with the situation. That he could care less. I mean, it's, you know, he's got, when he buys them all, he knows he has responsibilities. He knows he obviously has, you know, rent, you know, taxes he has to pay. He also he knows he has to obviously maintain a structure. I mean, you don't, you know, no homeowner buys a house and says, I'm just going to live here. The mall owner says that he is currently working on fixing the outage and that the power should be back up and running by tonight. The state budget is late. CBS 5 investigative reporter Mary Keeler tells us what it means for you. An expert from a government research group tonight telling me that it's not unusual it's taking this long.
Governor Kathy Hochul in all day answering questions about her proposed state spending plan for 2023. Yes, there'll be changes based on the input from the legislature. That's what we want to happen. That is the give and take, which is an important part of our democratic process here in the state of New York. Blair Horner is the executive director of the New York Public Interest Research Group, which is a nonpartisan, nonprofit organization. More particularly tweaks to the bail law has been the oxygen that's uh, the uh, issue that's been sucking the oxygen out of the room. Uh, also, the issue of what to do about the, uh, the public subsidy of the construction of New Buffalo Bills NFL football stadium. Those two things, I think, are really uh, have slowed down the process. From the state capitol on Tuesday, Horner took my questions. Much of his answers focused on transparency. He says the governor presented her budget publicly in January. The Senate and Assembly presented their proposed changes and have done what they're required to do to keep the people of New York informed. But he says public input could and should be ramped up. It's the public's money that's being discussed up here. Uh, and the public has very little. Uh, understanding of what's going on, not because they can't handle it, but because they simply don't know. Horner says it's not unusual that negotiations are dragging on. So at the end of the day, we'll know, right? We'll know when the budget's done, what it looks like, uh, but it ain't done yet. The extender lasts until Thursday. That expert also telling me that it doesn't look like any government services should be interrupted as of right now, but any delay in government process does not give people the best impression of how their government is working for them.